all this time waiting. Like we were so ready this morning. We really was. We were. We were ready to go. We were ready to start. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Everything was ready and primed. We have our Bob Ross liquid white on our canvas, just a very small amount. And then we hit the cameras and we don't even have gloves on. So, all right, everybody ready to go? Yeah. Today we have sap green, phthalo green, uh, dark sienna, a phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, or the mountain mixture, if you're using the Bob Ross paints, uh, titanium white, bright red, yellow ochre, cad yellow. I don't know if we're gonna use them all, I doubt it. Um, but we're gonna do this crazy. What's up? We're gonna do this crazy sort of scene. Uh, do a green sky, make it very Halloweeny. We've been doing these Halloween paintings in October. Uh, all of these paintings are available down at the Apothecarium down on Buffalo and Sahara, the uh, dispensary that we work for. Ooh, I thought it was break time already. All right, so we're gonna start with our phthalo green. Okay, gonna bring it down a little bit, tap Good. it in. Good morning, John Krasniak. Good morning, everyone. Okay, now remember, these paints are very thick, okay? So you just need a little bit on your, on your uh, brush. You don't need a whole big amount of paint. And we'll start up here at the top and bring it down a little bit from the corners, kind of give ourselves an idea of what our color looks like. If we want to brighten it, if we don't want to, I don't know, doesn't like us. And then rotate the brush around. You can see very slowly and start to shape. Try to get our perfect, our perfect circle. And just spin until we like the way that it looks, right? I mean, take all this stuff and pull it out. Don't need all that. Try to get it close to our edge as possible. All with that phthalo green, very Halloween-y kind of painting, babe. It is. It's a beautiful teal, by the way. Yeah, it's a, it's a great like sea green color, or if you want to do like a spooky night sky kind of deal, use your phthalo green. No. But not just phthalo green, we're going to mix in some sap green as well. Use the other green. Didn't wash the brush, just right here onto the, the thing, and we'll change up the color of this green, right? And you can see as we blend down, that white makes it go lighter, right? It starts to mix with all that white, and it'll change color on us. So we're not really blending anything out. Kind of mixing in both these greens here, and I'm going to come over and grab like the smallest little amount of that, that dark black, and really make our the top of our sky nice and dark, right? And then we're going to blend all these colors together, and it's going to change into this cool little bit that we didn't even plan on, right? And that's what's fun about painting to me. Hey, by the way, if you're new here, or you've never tuned in before, or you just started joining and following Paint with Josh, Drop me a message so that I know who you are, please, in the comments. I'm excited. I like it when new people show up. I yes, love London it. loves talking to new people. I, <laughs> I also like it when the regulars show up. John Krasniak, Roberta Harris, and Nick Babcock. They were all here. All, right. all the regs. Yep. Okay, we're going to take our two-inch brush and just sort of, again, try to stay away from our little moon, right? And just make everything nice and soft and blend it together. Gonna get some of that paint away from the moon. We don't need it to be super thick around there, so we wanna blend it out, right? And then we can just crisscross stroke the rest of it. Crisscross, just like this, bam, 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 bam. What you're doing is bringing some of the color one way, some of the other color the other way, and you're just mixing them together until you like the way that it looks. No one else has to like how it looks besides you. And if you like it, guaranteed someone else is gonna like it. Just like that. And you can see the more and more we go down, the lighter and lighter it gets because now we're mixing with more and more and more of that white. So, always do our sides, right? Gotta finish the sides, guys. I always say finish the sides. It takes like an extra two seconds to do and it just looks much better. Even if you, you know, if you frame it, cool. If not, it's gonna look awesome just hanging on the wall like that. Just getting off all the color on our brush here. Shane Jackson is here. Shane Jacks. I like that. The moon looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. There's a little area where the cup was kind of jaggedy from old paint on there. Let's see if we can't adjust the angle of this circle here. Just enough. All right. Just enough to get it to touch. Bam, 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 bam. Is that still a circle? I don't know. No one knows. There we go. Don't want 
to get too much of that dark color around our pretty bright white moon, right? Shallon Drones is here, Kate Campbell. Welcome everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've never seen my cup technique, you're welcome for that. Go and use that on your own. I love how we have this different color green in the sky. Maybe we could put something over there. Something spooky. Let's see. All right, I like it. I like it, I like it. <clears throat> okay, now I wanna get a nice kind of dark purpley mixture for our cloud color. So we're gonna make a little bit of black, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of blue. And we're just gonna mix them all together until we get this nice dark color. I know on my nice clean palette, it's very easy for everyone to see, right? <laughs> but you just want it to look black. That's all we're looking for. Just wanna have the paint look really black when you get done using it. And it will take up a little bit on our knife, just a little. That's even too much, okay? Little bit, and then we'll kind of decide what our clouds are gonna look like, where they're gonna live. Babe. Yes. Dean from Skinscape Ship. Yeah, what's funny about the way you say that is it almost sounds exactly like how Dean says it. <laughs> I can Dean, say that welcome to my you welcome to my YouTube channel. YouTube on a Tuesday. A YouTube on a Tuesday. Uh, Ricochet reviews are here. First time with Josh live. I've just awesome. started to learn to paint. I think Josh is the best teacher. Hello, well, London. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Don't pay attention to London. Continue your praise for me. Thank you. I appreciate We all know that. Josh is great. That's why we're here, and that's why I'm married to him. Like, this oh, yeah, but you goes. didn't marry me for my painting skills. Yeah, I, that came on much later no, in life. No, that's not true, actually. Many years ago, around a crystal ball, when I was, like, two, oh. they said, you will marry the reincarnation of Bob Ross. And I said, ha, <laughs> hey, ha, ha. Let's not get Who too that? crazy. I am no Bob and Ross. And here we are now. I am no... The only difference... Bib right? Yeah. The only difference... You've already been screwed over by a company about your old one. <laughs> true. Right? And the true. only difference is, is you have ferrets and not squirrels. That's, That's true. That's really... If I could difference. get one of the ferrets to sit on my shoulder the entire time while we paint, that would be so great. But they're, they're so... They like to move too much. They're very mobile. What about Benadryl? Yeah, but you can't drug the ferrets. <laughs> get out of here. Where are you going, anyway? I'm She's, leaving like, leaving you. me. Yeah, I'm leaving you. I'm standing oh. in the doorway. I was going to make sure that the uh, the tribe of children that we have next door, which do not all belong to us, but for the time being are in our protection and control, right. uh, are making weird screaming noises. They're making weird screaming noises. And I just want to make sure they're all right. Mm. Hey, babe, while I'm gone, why don't you tell people about the raffle? Just oh, about the raffle, right. So we're going to raffle off a few paintings. The raffle for today is for your choice of, I think, these three right here. I don't know if everyone can see the orange one, the blue one, or the, the kind of pinkish, trippy, Tim Burton style one. So you can enter by, uh, by sending in a dollar per entry. You can enter as many times as you want. Let's see what this looks like real quick. I almost don't even want to mess with anything else, but it's almost like we have to put some clouds over our moon. So you can enter as many times as you want. For a dollar, you can send them to my PayPal or Venmo or Cash App or whatever you have. Uh, I don't know if John has those links, but if you do, John, then uh, what's our PayPal? What's all the links, babe? Maybe you could put the links in okay. in the all comments right. section. Right. I'm here. And I'm then uh, it's going to look really cool if we do the same thing, a little bit bigger, and run across our moon like that. should look really neat. Should. So we're going to try it out. But uh, yeah, you can enter by sending a dollar. Some people send five, some people send 10 or 20. John sent 100 one time and he lost, even though he sent 100 bucks, he didn't even win. I think the person that won that week had, it was like a $10 entry or $5 entry. All right, let's keep painting, Josh. James Balage Jr. says, Josh has been an inspiration to me as a new painter. Oh, that's very neat, thank you. Shane Jackson says, if the crystal ball says so, it's got to be true. Yeah, Same. right. Look at that, nice and messy, right? When we say make a mess, that's what we talk about. It's nice and messy. We're just taking the knife and just scrubbing it in, leaving lighter areas, darker areas, right? Josh loves his what, guys? Different Differences color. in color, right? It's not only politically correct, but for painting as well. There we go. Try not to get paint on my, I like, I hang my brushes just slightly over the edge of the table and then wonder why my pants or shorts or sweats have paint on them, it's because I bump into my dang brushes. Okay, I didn't tell you guys this because one was talking on the first one. 
So we're taking the, the top corner of the brush, okay, and just making, what are these lines on my elbow? That's very strange. No one look at my elbow. I have like some sleep lines still, apparently. What? There's like some indentions, like I sat, I laid on a cord or oh. put my arm down too much on something. Well, you know what I said, if you ever get too wrinkly. Oh, you're gonna get rid of me? Yep. There we go, we're just gonna mix down underneath. Look at that, how we mixed underneath and it became much lighter. Don't even bother. It's almost like the light is coming down from underneath. There we go. And all we're doing is just very, making counterclockwise circles, right? You can do clockwise circles, it doesn't matter which way you go. But in order to kind of grip that, the top edge and not stray too far away, I like to go counterclockwise and then you can kind of maintain your shape a little bit. And you don't want it to be perfect, right? You want to have some bits that come up into your, your uh, moon. By the way, uh, Dean, probably after I made the comment about how you said it and how it sounded like Dean, he decided to write on YouTube, cleanest palette ever. Yeah, I do. So... It's because I get lazy after painting, after entertaining everyone for an hour, an hour and a half. Right? During the show. Right. And then I get lazy and I go downstairs and then I rewatch the video and respond to comments of people that haven't, you know, that might not have watched it live that are watching it now. And then I have to share it into all the groups. And then my palette just gets forgotten about up here. Kay Campbell says, your mess with the knife is different than my mess. Oh, no, no, come on. If anyone new here, you will hear Josh say that the canvas tells him what to do. It's true, it tells and us. As being married to him, I can strictly tell you that the canvas only talks to Josh in no. this household. Doesn't tell so, you what to do? No, it doesn't tell me what to do. See, well, you got to take a break, step back, look at it, and go, okay, what else would look neat if we did this, right? Or whatever. Right, yeah, you need some sort of intellectual or understanding <laughs> in order to understand what goes Let's on. Let's take a canvas. little bit of just pure white up here. It'll be like that area up here just got a lot more light than the rest of the Bye, Shane. Clouds. Have a great day. Well, Shane's out. Shane's leaving. Oh, if we don't mention Shane, he just leaves? Yeah, apparently. Apparently so. Didn't you tell everyone how great Shane was last week? I know. Shane gave me a good idea last week. Yeah, now he's just off. He's like, oh, that's not my idea. Bye. Yeah, right. Peace. See how we can tell it's much, much, much lighter. You can almost barely even see it, at least on the camera that I'm looking at. There we go. And all we're doing is just kind of very lightly fluffing it, right? <laughs> Dean says, my wife fluff. tells me what to do. Well, I do that too. A little fluff. There we go. Me and the canvas have yet to join forces. <laughs> yeah, right. Everybody can see clearly? There's I no can glare. see clearly now. The rain has gone. There's no glare on the canvas though, right? Uh, not on YouTube, no. And Facebook, there's a little bit of a glare on the right-hand side. Oh, it's Shane's anniversary date. Oh, nice. Happy anniversary. James Ballage Jr. says, what size palette knife do you use? I like using the smaller one, right? I have the Bob Ross stuff because that's what I bought initially when I first started and I never went away from it. Uh, but I like using the smaller one. It seems to connect more on the canvas, right? Like uh, so on the bigger one, sometimes it'll feel like one point, either the back or the front is, you know, touching harder or scraping more. So I like the small one. It just makes me feel like I can do more things, more more intricate details with the small one. Bill Britt says, first time watching live, enjoy watching you paint. Oh, well, thank you, Bill. Shane Jackson says, make me feel bad. Yeah. Yes, this is paint with Josh on a Sunday with a side <laughs> of guilt trip. Have yeah. a great day, Shane. Yeah, have a good anniversary <laughs> while you're thinking about not being with us. <laughs> That's all you're gonna think about during your anniversary is like, yeah, I could have, I could have been with Josh in London and everyone painting, but then I had this damn anniversary, and now you're gonna resent your Didn't wife. Did you have one last year? Yeah, I'm right. Have another next year. Just tell your wife, can we do it on another day that's not Sunday? It's not show day, please. Hey Shane, don't worry, come back next Sunday. <laughs> yeah, we'll be here. Next Sunday is gonna be an especially important show. Is it? Oh yeah, next Sunday is London's birthday, guys. Hey. We're gonna have to. We're going to have to paint, like, you know, Balloons. the best. Because <laughs> I can't touch real ones. <laughs> the best painting we've ever painted for London. And everyone's going to have to say, like, over and over, like, a million comments, happy birthday. Otherwise, I'll be disappointed, you guys. That's not what needs to happen. Okay, so I took a little bit of our white, mixed it in with our dark color, just to make it a little bit lighter than the majority of the pile. If you can even see on this terrible 
dirty pallet. There we go. We're pulling down on both sides in the same direction, exactly the same lines. Is the YouTube camera zoomed in this week? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll do it up here. Exactly the same direction, exactly the same lines, using a little bit of that paint, and then every so often kind of pulling in from that thicker, darker pile. And then you'll get this random, whoops. It's break, break time at work. State flower, guys. Go to the apothecarium, right? Open 24 hours. Uh, but you'll get this random deposit of different color paint on your brush as well. So when you're doing your, your trees and stuff, some will be darker, some will be lighter, and it will give us depth and distance and all that jazz, right? And differences in color. Differences in color. And if, again, if you mix it with white first and make it this lighter color, we can come back in and add another section of trees darker, right? Again, giving us more depth. So how high do we want to start our trees is the question. Don't cover that. That sky. is the question. Please don't cover that. You have sky. to cover some of your favorite parts. It's beautiful. I know. That's the thing, though. You got to cover some of your favorite parts of your painting, right? And that's going to be the direction of our forest. So we can come back in. If you want to have depth, like say that's your most favorite cloud you ever made, you have to cover it. You have to put it behind something. I know. You got to, though. And that way it pushes that cloud back. We're going to leave all this stuff, right, so you can see, but just these little bits that pop up into the cloud make that cloud look much further away now. I always have to cover a little bit of your favorite piece, and that way it'll give you depth, right? You don't want to do it, but you gotta. There we go. We're not going to make these guys too crazy long today, because I want to have a lot of fogginess, right? And then we'll put down here, we're going to make a little tree for our side, finish the edges, of course. And then the lighter and lighter, right? We have less and less and less paint as we come down. So it's getting lighter and lighter, depositing less and less paint. Now, we're gonna take our two inch brush, swipe it up, and it drags some of the thicker bits of that paint even higher and more pointy. You get these cool tip tops of your trees. So you don't wanna do it too many times and you don't wanna have too much pressure, right? If you use too much pressure, they're all gonna be the same shape that this brush is gonna leave, right? It's gonna drag it up too much. So don't use too much pressure, right? Let's come down here and grab some of this white that we still have, right? Lighten up our brush a little bit, and then we'll come up into our, our trees and just tap them. Tap, 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 right? Sort of at a downward 45 degree angle like this, tapping at them. And that's gonna drag that paint down, right? Which is why we don't want a whole lot on our brush to begin with, because then it's gonna make all this fog you know, it's gonna darken the whole rest of your canvas. And we wanna keep it, you know, the majority, we wanna have it as light as we can possibly have it until we get down to the very bottom. Hey, by the way, I just failed to mention, if you're on YouTube and you see a link that says amazon.com, that will take you to Josh's page. Just in case anyone's confused, this is a page where Amazon accepted Josh into the influencer program. Josh does make money. It is an advertisement, and he does make money off the products that you purchase. And it's an affiliate link. Just have to make that clear, because Amazon have become very, very, very strict on whether we release the link or not. Yeah. They've done it to a lot of influencers. Well, it's the same. It's not just us, but... It's it, the same with the Printful affiliate you know, link. When, I, yeah. when someone goes, where do you make your prints from? I go, I use this site. Uh, this is my affiliate link, and, you know, I get, like... 10% of a bonus of anything that you guys sell if you sign up through my link. Same thing with Amazon. I get a little bit, I make like two cents on every dollar that you spend. Yeah, it's not a huge amount of money, but that is the way that Josh makes subsidiary income outside of his full-time job and selling artwork is True. through affiliate links and through influencer links. If you join YouTube, he's going to get that money. That money is not going to go to YouTube, it's going to go to Josh. True. Which helps him bring content to everybody. And buy more canvases to make more paintings. Right? In case you're the first person on the internet, anybody in the comments has watched. That is the understanding of how a lot of artists, influencers, everybody. Jason Derulo uses M&Ms in his video because Eminem sent him <laughs> 25,000 M&Ms and said, please use a video, this is a paid sponsorship. Yeah, right. Like, just to be clear, that is how Josh makes his money. Well, tries. Well, yeah, <laughs> obviously. No one's yet to buy a yacht through Amazon. I know. Right? If you guys could go buy like a car or something really <laughs> expensive through Amazon, then I'd get like more than, than $10 a month. That would be great. That's what I literally make on Amazon. If anyone's wondering, it's like $10 a month. 
YouTube is nice. The more you guys watch my YouTube channel and the more you watch those tutorial videos, these videos, they're always up on YouTube, then I make about, currently right now, I make about, I don't know, $70 a month from just the videos. All that two years of work to create more than 100 videos for you guys back when no one watched. Back when I first started, no one, not a single person was watching my videos. And you think to yourself, you're like, why am I, why am I continuing to do this for no one? And then all of a sudden, it was like, everything just started exploding. And then we had, uh, like literally, I'm almost up to 50,000 views, okay? I'm at 49,000 views right now. And the majority of those all came in the last like six months. And I think it's because people ask all the time, they go, oh, what do you, you know, what would be your advice if you were making a YouTube channel? And it's nothing more than, than having good content. Because the better I got at painting and the better I got at describing, you know, teaching you guys how to paint what I was painting, that's literally what it is. You can paint, but can you describe to someone else how to do a certain thing? You know what I mean? Very straight, up and down, making our little hash mark trees, right? That's the thing. Can you describe it to someone who's never done it before? And once my paintings started getting better, I started getting more and more and more people and more people watched and all that. So that's my suggestion to someone who goes, how do you do a YouTube channel? You know, well, first you got to have good content. If you don't have good content, no one will watch. Trust me, I've been there. I have been there. There we go. Okay, doing the exact same thing that we just did. Now with another set of forests and all of a sudden now we have some distance in there, right? Really, with all that, all that cloud, we got our moon, we got our clouds, got more distance here, more distance here, and that's why we do this fog technique, right? You got to make it foggy, and also, it's not just giving you the illusion of that distance back there, but it's making this paint much softer than the, than the paint here, right? So now we can add more stuff in here. If you have all this thick paint everywhere, you're, eventually your thick paint is not going to stick to the other thick paint. That's why we leave these little soft areas in between. You can bring up the fog as high as you want in some places, lower in other places, and now we have this nice, soft place that we can use, you know, we can put something else. Give our trees our little swipe, almost forgot. Remember, not too much pressure, you don't want to have too much. There we go. All right, what are we going to do now, guys? What are we going to do now? That's the thing. The canvas, like London was saying, the canvas talks to me. So tell me, canvas, where are we going to go from here? Bill Britt is from Fort Oglethorpe in Georgia. I really hope that's how you say that. In Georgia, the state, yes. or Georgia, the country? Didn't we have this conversation? We did have this country. Time? We did. We did have this country. We did have this conversation about whether or not Georgia was a country. There is a country named Georgia. I was right. Yeah. That's For what's once. Right yeah. All right. Let's take a little bit. I want to have our fog like a little bit brighter. So I'm going to take a little white, a little bit of our phthalo green, and then come up into our fog, and hopefully it should. Kind of brighten it up just a bit or change the color at least a little. Let's see. Really want to be able to bounce something off of this front fog, so I want to make it a little bit lighter in color, right? Which could mean that we would have used less, you know, we could have used less paint on our brush in the trees had we known what we were doing, but you know, as we paint around here and say all the time, we literally make it up as we go along. So I had an idea, and now we have a different look to our painting. By the way, Bill Britt's from the state of Georgia. The state of Georgia. The, the, the peach, the Georgia peach, right? Yes, that's where the peaches come from. Well, not, I'm sure not every peach comes from there. Maybe. Ooh, look at that. Like, if we get, I can almost see this hill coming down this way. I mean, you could do, like, another flat area over here. What are we going to do? I love how this fog looks up. It's very nice. Oh, it's so nice. Okay. Stop stalling, Josh, and paint something, right? Okay, let's take it. Let's really take a step back and we're going to look at it. I can't see from this dang light. All right, let's see. There seems to be more glare on the canvas now. I need to fix it. Have I moved it slightly? I don't know. Maybe. 
Is that better? No, that no, that seems Facebook. more of the angle to me because this is how it normally looks. I get all the glare and you guys get to see it all clear. It's Facebook that's kind of glary. <clears throat> well, let's adjust the angle. I am. Oh, okay. You hush. All right, I'll just, I'll just paint. Thing. I'll just paint. What did you call me before the stream started? Uh, the master of streams? Right. Yeah. So shut up. You paint, <laughs> I stream. Hush shut up, face. she said. She said shut up, guys. Hush your face. For right. anyone who feels sorry for Josh, please send him a dollar. You have the yeah. links. Yeah. He might also win a painting. Yeah, if you send in a dollar for the painting... You might win. All right, we've mixed up our dark and, and white. All right, let's get this all situated here, Josh. Stop getting paint on my shorts. And let's put, let's put like a fence in. Could we, we could do like a downward fence, like a step. And we could do straight across. We could do all sorts of stuff. Well, what's the canvas telling you, small man? Well, uh, it's telling me straight across. Well, then but there you go. these lights, the way that the light is, it's hard to see where... Annette Babcock says, so glad you stuck it out. I think you are one of the best teachers. Aw, oh, thank you. Roberta Harris so says, sweet. so glad I found your videos. Love watching and learning. So I think the secret to you being awesome on YouTube is to have somebody with a British accent in the background moderating your videos. <laughs> Very true. If you could just get it's that. It's all home. London. It's not all London. There we go. But I appreciate you being so All right. My plan back here is to make a fence against the shoreline. The shoreline. The tree line. <laughs> like there's the no water, line. babe. There's no water. All right. We can even go up a little higher. Let's do that. So we're going to pull our little fence beams across. Just very small. Don't need them very long or very wide. They're going to be off in the distance, right? So let's make them all about the same size, about the same length and about the same distance apart. Uh, just like that. You can always go a little longer on the bottom if you think you need, because you can pull it out and make all kinds of shadows and cool stuff with it. Oh no! All right, just like that. Now we're gonna come in with our little second cross beam. I'm just gonna run it on my knife straight through all the rest of that stuff back there. You scrape up the same amount, right, and come across and just kind of push at a at a certain thing. It's a it's a feel, but if you can deposit that paint straight sideways, then it'll look like what we got over here. Now let's see. Why don't we take our shadows in this direction and just pull them over, kind of slightly down, and you can see. That's what's cool about this thick oil paint is you can literally pull it. You can drag those little bits. You can create the shadows that it's casting from the moon, right? Just by pulling it with a slight amount of pressure. And you can make all these, these oil paints just move. And that's where I sometimes get uh, lost <clears throat> is I'll be watching. Let's see. Just trying to create our little small bit of shadow down here. Very light, very light amount. But I'll be I'll be painting it and I'll be watching the paint move like like it's an actual video. Like I'm watching it. And the more that I swipe, the more the snow blows across the painting, and then all of a sudden it doesn't look like I wanted it to look anymore. Or I gotta be honest, babe, that fence looks fire. It's neat, right? It is. Old little scraggly old fence back there. He's way off. Alright, so let's take a little bit of white, a little bit of brown. There's a little bit of the brown. If it's brown, flush it down. All right, come over here. I always run out of room making my little piles. And I always seem to grab up some amount of phthalo green into my brown just because they're right next to my palette all the time. Do you guys do that? Do you put your, your colors in the exact same spots each time? Which way would we highlight this? If the moon was coming, you know, let's do it on the, on the left. So just pull it over just a little bit on the left. You want to leave some of that dark shadow back there. All right, so we're just we're moving about a half, halfway across. Whatever size you made, make this this light bit about half of that shadow. Can everyone see? So just so there's a little bit of light on it. It's nighttime. It's foggy. 
Yeah, just like that. Now we're just going to do the top of the of the fence, right? I'm not even touching in all the same spaces. It's never going to be all the same amount of light on this old scraggly wooden. This thing's probably round, you know what I mean? So it's not going to be the same amount of light everywhere. There we go. So we don't even have to connect all these light bits is what I'm, it's basically what I'm saying. The fence looks awesome. I know, my hand is very shaky today. I don't know why. Well, maybe it's perfecting the fence because that fence is fire. You guys are making me nervous, right? Oh, he's nervous, people. He's not nervous. Josh doesn't get nervous. It's true. I'm going to be painting live dressed as Bob Ross down at the Apothecarium on Halloween day, guys. So I'll be broadcasting, because since it's on a Sunday, we're going to be broadcasting live from a remote location, uh, and it's going to be fantastic. Let's put an old building back here. What do you guys think? It looks like it's screaming for an old building. That guy just didn't have any highlight down here at the base. I think we need to make these guys a bit longer, too. So let's drag down a little bit of our color. It's small edge bar now. You can use a large edge. You can use whatever. But just a little bit of color. And then that way we can really pull it out and make it distinct, right? Like So say we want to pull it just this way slightly. And then we'll have a bit where we know there's a bit of, there's a bit of land back there. It looks very foggy, right? There's not a lot of definition to what the land actually looks like back here because it's all misty. Right? Then I have this mysterious bit, and we know that's the shadow. It's actually almost missing like a, the top. So I'm just going to add a little bit of color. You see, you go back and you miss these things. And we're probably going to end up losing all these shadows anyway. We're just going to add a little bit of color, and then I'm going to take my two-inch brush, pull it down a little bit it over and now our shadow at least looks like there's something else looks like maybe now there's water there and we could reflect underneath right you never know that's why i always suggest watching the video first because you never know what josh is going to do and i might say something like there'd be water over here and then we'll just never paint water someone did that they were doing a, a one of my tutorials and I, I must have said let's put a little pond over here or something so they put the pond over there, and then when it came time to it, I covered over the pond because I'd forgotten about that because we make them up live right as we go, right? All right, let's do... What are we going to do, babe? Hmm. This could be like a graveyard in here. I thought you said the canvas tells you. Why are you asking yeah, me? Yeah, I know. It is telling me. Okay. Hush face. Okay. All right, we're going to have to... First, let's get rid of all this color. Leave it on our palette, right? Then we're going to come up here and scrape in like our double building. Which means we're going to lose a lot of this forest, but that's okay. Okay, we're going to scrape it down, turn, scrape it down again, right? And those angles are creating the pitch of our roof. Okay, we'll come over like this, come down, come across. Can you guys see what I'm doing through the paint? All right, so we're going to scrape up all that paint. We don't need it anymore. Get it out of there. Get rid of it, all right? This will be the side of our of our little cabin. So our roof will come down to about there. We got our side, bam, bam, bam. Stretch it out in your mind. This is how we draw, right? We're, we're, we're drawing it out on the canvas before we attach the paint to it. And that way we're gonna know that we like what it looks like. Okay, now we'll come in with that same dark color. Pull it straight down at the same angles that we just scratched out. Okay, now we're coming in. Come over here on the side, straight down. Let's pull it down. And we got our roof. Don't want it to be real thick up here because we can add highlights and different color to the roof. So if, you're, if your base paint is too thick, then it's not going to work. Okay, let's get a little bit more of that brown. Mix it up into that white pile that we already created. Get some of the skin out of there. Ooh. I know, I leave, <laughs> I, know. I leave them for too long and that's what happens. <laughs> And that Babcock says, I try to put the colors in the same spot so I know which pile is which, like yeah, black. Right. Yeah, black and blue look very similar yeah. on the on the palette. John Krasniak has officially entered the raffle. John's in for the raff. He is. Damn, okay, so you can see we went a little bit darker on the side that's away from the light, right? It's, that's how you make your cabin have this curved look to it. What are we going to do for the roof? Let's mix up a little bit of white, a little bit of 
that dark color, we'll get this kind of lightish gray. Very light color gray though, because I want it to stand out. And then pull it down on our roof. Same angles, just two knife lengths. It's really it. And then just make it look how you want. I like leaving little imperfections in there like that. It makes it look cool. Maybe there's a hole in the roof. Maybe now the building is abandoned because it's so decrepit, right? Add a little bit and go over the edge just slightly with the eave, right? It gives it a little bit of depth towards the back. Now let's come in and make like a window right in the center. Scraping away the paint. <clears throat> and shoot, I mean, you could add, we could make, hmm, we have all these other colors, right? We could make it habitable, like there's somebody in there. So let's mix up a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. Come in and just fill in that section with a little bit of yellow and white. Right, it keeps it nice and bright. You don't have to go down all the way. It doesn't have to look perfect. Right, You can have little bits. You can go back and now shape your window differently and fill it in with that bit of brown. Right Now we have a little square window, very simply. Very simply done. I right, like giving it a little bit of imperfection though. Right, you don't have to have it be perfect. You want it to be imperfect. Okay, let's make up a little bit more of our dark color. A little bit of black, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of... Anybody? What's the last color that we use? Anyone? Differences. No, <laughs> what? A little bit of blue. <clears throat> Doesn't matter what blue you have. If you've got Prussian blue or Thalo blue or Carillion blue or Millennium Falcon blue or however many other blues there are. I don't think there's a Millennium Falcon blue. All right, now let's scrape up. Let's actually get rid of all that stuff again, right? Because now we have to scrape out our what our other cabin is going to look like. Now, based off of these angles right here, we're not going to see a lot of the side of the cabin just because we ran out of room on this size, right? So let's come down, make our little pitch, make our little pitch, pull it down. That's perfect because I want it to be just in front of that bit of fence and it's going to connect, right? Scrape hard. We're not getting a lot of paint, but we're getting some paint off. And the less paint that you have on there, the less you have to fight with, right? Okay, so we'll be able to see our roof. Let our roof come down. It's gonna take some of that. And we'll save like just the side of the building just so we can show it's kind of turning. Grab up our little bit of dark, come down, straight down, pushing hard, right? Filling it in, blocking it in, like Bob used to say, you block it in. Push hard. You know, some of it, if you don't have enough, it'll kind of drag like that. So make sure you've got enough paint. Push it down. That was like the most perfect thing Push I've ever down. seen in my life. What? Your straight down. down line. Oh. That was, that was amazing. Thank you. Okay, now all we want is this little bit of thick paint on here to grip the, the brown and white paint. That's why we put these shadows on so it grips it in different places as it goes down. <clears throat> and remember, always come down further than we think we need, and I usually forget. Right? And that way we, it'll give us some amount of color to pull, which will push that fence even further back. You guys see what I'm talking about? Okay, a little bit more brown, a little bit more white. And actually, let's just get that straight brown, and we're going to put that on this side, straight down. Right? That way, that's going to be a darker color than the other stuff, right? For anybody interested, you can head over to YouTube, Paint with Josh on YouTube, to see a, a closer in version. Oh yes, YouTube is zoomed in, so if you wanted to see that, If you want to see less of Josh's there. head, and yeah. more of the painting YouTube is where it's at. Yeah, less talky, more painty, as people like to say. <laughs> like, I'm trying to explain what I'm doing. You don't care, you just want me to paint, which is fine. No, I don't think go. they mind you talking. I think it's when we disappear off into a tangent. Oh, when we banter it? Yeah. There but then we go. have just as many people tell us how much they yeah, love Yeah, that's what they talk. like, is when we when we talk when and chit-chat. tell you to shut up. There we go. <laughs> now that looks right. There we go. Got to get it to where it you can see the point of the roof in the wood paneling of your top piece, and that will look more mo better. Mobeta, mobeta, okay, let's take that brown and white again, right? And it's just a random mix of however you want it to look. I just don't want it to look too bright because it's nighttime. 
right? But just mixing it with that white is gonna make it a brighter color than the original brown that we used over there. Now we're gonna come back again, and let's do it from the center, right up underneath the peak, and pull it down, just like that. It's way better than my wood graining from last week. Yeah, did anyone see London in the Wednesday video? She put the wood grain on the top piece of that building. It was fantastic. It sucked. No, it's good. It sucked. There we go, just like that. Again, I don't want it to be too dark, very lightly pulling down so it breaks, just like on the mountain. Right? The more you push, the more it'll be different. And the more, you know, you don't over mix your paint, you'll have all these cool little differences in there, right? Who got the email this past week, by the way? <clears throat> oh, did anyone get the uh, Paint with Josh email that goes out? What is that? Where did that come from? I don't know. Do you have shorts? Yeah, right. Probably... Okay, let's do, let's do some, no, let's pull it out first. Okay, since we have a light on upstairs. Roberta Harris says, finish the sides of the upper part of the building too. It is done. Well, Roberta, she caught me. There we go. All right, I tried to stay out of your guys' way and do this afterwards, but it's fine. It's fine. The other side of the building doesn't need anything. It was just a roof that came across. This side is actually fully completed. Is it because it was on fire? <clears throat> <laughs> all right, what should we put? We could do, I mean, we could do all sorts of stuff. We could do a little window. Now we're gonna have to fill in that window with something. And we're gonna do our door. And remember, your door has to be taller than your fence, right? So, you can't have a small door with this huge bit of fence behind it. It's gonna look like the fence is, you know, 15 feet tall. So make your door big enough I like scraping it away just like that so we've got this opening to a to a building now you can come in with a different you know say we can make up some brown and white and we'll actually paint the door since this guy is is home or maybe there's a ghost up there something's happening <laughs> I did not understand that sentence at all it took my brain a minute to catch up with you <laughs> let me see what it looks like I've never done this before for a door but let's see what it looks like when we pull sideways all right we'll get the wood grain at a different uh, angle, which should look kind of neat. And then if we could shape it like a door, give it a handle, it looks different than the than the actual door, right? You guys are like, Josh, it looks like crap. Ricochet That's reviews says genius. I am. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. It's obviously not crap. All we're doing is just lining it in a little bit of dark just to kind of create the shape of the door. That was a bit too much, but it's okay. We can make it work back and forth, back and forth. Bam, now we've got a different sort of kind of wood grain to our door, shaped out in black. And then we can even take, and we'll take a bit of our straight up midnight black, take a little goop of it. And what side would the door be on, babe? Right or left? To open? Yeah, it'd be this way. Wouldn't open that way, it would be on this side. There we go. Add our little door handle. Bam. Now you got a door. You got a door that's a different kind of wood grain than your other door. You can even take a little bit of liquid white, a little bit of uh, our cad yellow, and just mix it up. Bam, 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 bam. And then we can come in, maybe put a little bit of a light on the outside of the house, like a sconce. He said sconce. A sconce light, right on the sconce. outside of the house. Now that looks so good, I'm gonna do it again. Sconce. A little sconce. Who else has sconces on their, on their house? Like we your real one. house? We yeah. have one. We have some sconces. There we go, bam. Two little sconces to light up the way, right? Now, what are we gonna do inside the window? Let's make it a different color yellow. All right, so we'll take some yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of our cad yellow, just kind of mix them together. It will change up the color of our yellow and then we'll come back in, same thing, fill it in with that bit of light. And just from the way that it broke on the knife, it almost looks like there's something in there, right? There's a creature or a, or a mist or some kind of something in the window and we didn't paint it. It didn't come off the knife. We didn't have to do it. It's a Christmas tree. Yeah, but we're gonna leave it in there. We're gonna kind of black out the rest of the... Oh, you're kidding. Come on, Josh. 
paint is too thick right there. Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Gotta know your paint. There we go. A little bit of dark. Rotate. Rotate. I don't want to cover up that this dark mass that's in the window. That looks really neat to me. I'm gonna fill in this bit. Because it all doesn't have to be wood green. It's very dark out. It's nighttime. Now we can shape what our, our cabin sort of looks like, okay? Remember to keep our door just about the same height. We start up in the left corner. We're going to come down at an angle. And then in this, and normally you would go back up at that same angle, but on this one we're not going to be able to do that. We're just going to pull it straight out and then continue on this downward angle. Just like that. See that? Now you pull out this bit of land that your cabin is sitting on, or whatever this is to you. A cabin, a shack, some kind of something. Just because there's a dark line right in the middle of that top window, I'm going to do another cross beam, and it'll be like I actually did it, and I planned it. See what I mean? That other one was there. I didn't do that. And that's the best part about painting to me. You don't you know, you don't even have to explain what everything is. People will figure, you know, people will see different things. And that's what's cool. So a little bit more of that dark brown, and then just up underneath the eave, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. I think there's a little shadow up here, maybe. Just slightly. Don't want to mess around with it too much, but just change it up a little bit. Just a touch. This old shaggy old building. Spooky, shaggy building. There we go. We need to shape out, leave some of our, you know, bit of mist in between the fence, like it's kind of rolling through underneath the fence here. I'm trying to save some of our shadow. I don't know what this line is. Let me just get rid of that. Bam, bam, bam. Now we can sort of see. We could have water right here. We could have like a cracking arm coming up out of the water. How cool would that be? That's actually a really cool idea. Who's who's for that? Like a giant, a giant size Kraken arm coming up out of the pond outside of whatever little thing this is. That would be a spooky Halloween painting. Maybe not giant, maybe like this big. And then we'll have another big tree over the top of him. That sounds really cool, babe. Kay Campbell says, how long does it take for your paintings to thoroughly dry? Yeah, well, I live in Las Vegas, so about five days. I'm not even kidding. Like, within five days, it's dry enough for me to package and ship. Just because it's so arid out here. I like that. I really like that idea. That's what we're going to do, right? It's spooky. It's Halloween. It's whatever. We make it up as we go along, right? Never painted this scene before. And we're about to right now. All right, how are we gonna make the water? Let's see. Let's put, you guys know me, I love a little bit of dark. If that's our water line, right? Let's say our water is back here. I like a little bit of dark on our, on our shore. And it just kind of helps give it some depth, right? We'll come over here to the edge, doesn't even matter. Go off the side for the baya. Or the winner, maybe this one will be auctioned off. Okay, we can kind of create that little bit of dark, and what that does is allow when we come in with our white and go over it with our little our liquid white paint that's very wet and slippery. Then we have our little bit of water line way back here, and it's almost like the, the water's recessed a little bit down underneath. Really cool. Just by adding a little bit of that dark before you start your, your water. We'll come over this side, bam, bam, bam. And that just gives me an idea on how we can, you know, situate everything. I like it. Looks good. There we go. I like not having my water super bright the further away it is. You don't want to have it real bright. And again, you don't want it to be perfect, right? You don't want it to look the same as, as always. That's not going to help anybody. Gotta have it be different. <clears throat> there we go. We're not even. We're gonna cover over the stuff at the bottom anyway. So don't even. Don't even trip, yo. Here we go. Just kind of, just messily, very messy. 
very messy. That's what water is, just a big mess. Then we're gonna take over here, swipe it just a little bit, dab off some paint, swipe it, dab it off, swipe it over. I just like it very soft. I'm, a, I'm, I'm kind of figuring out that my style is somewhere in between palette knife and, you know, uh, brush. It's kind of where it is, it's in between. Let's brush it. All right, now right here, I want to make a little bit of a... Jeez, guys. Now mom's going to go lay the law down. A little bit of like an indention right there, right? And then we can throw something over the top. Let's see. Okay. Let's wash off this one-inch brush. It's got about, it's got so much paint in it, it can't hold anything else. The law has been laid. Yeah. Lazy painter. Laura Lane mm. just entered the raffle. Oh, for how much? If you enter the raffle, could you please put a comment on Facebook or YouTube so that I know? Just so Levin can get your name in there. Like we're, you know, she's she's here to help you guys. Ricochet Reviews says, Josh, just so you know, I bought some micro brushes from oh, you. That's awesome. This week, I'm watching from Durham, North Carolina. Oh, cool. Roberta Harris says, release the Kraken. Yeah, right. It's going to be neat. Okay. So if you did enter the raffle, those entries go onto Josh's phone. So if you're here. Yeah, Josh's phone is broadcasting watching, to you. <laughs> please, please, please put a comment in. I think it was 10 for Laura Lane. But if you could just confirm for me, that would be amazing before I start writing your name 100 times for it to be five. Yeah, right. Annette Babcock says, I did through PayPal. Did you get? Yep, I got a mess. Yes. I have already put your names in the cigar box that we are using today. Right. bit of a little bit of a hill now what we did was we initially put our, our yellow ochre and, and cad yellow together to make that yellow and then we're going to come up here through the green and now we're going to add depth to all that stuff right so just very lightly different little bits of green not trying to change the color to green right we're oh. not trying to do that <laughs> we're just trying to add a couple little different bits different colors and mixed in together look really neat oh. what's up baby uh, Laura is John Krasnick's wife. Oh, Laura with a L-O-R-A. Yeah. There we go. Look, we got a little pathway we've laid out for our guy, too. Amazing. <clears throat> if I touch one more of these brushes onto my shorts. There we go. We're going to take our knife, right? It's the same width as the door. We do all this stuff on purpose, right? Same width. This is the same width as two of these little mini ones. It's all on purpose, so you guys can literally... Look at it at my knife and go, oh, his knife is held like this. Even though if I don't say it, you can still follow along, right? So we're going to hold it like that, like my little, my pinky over here, like I'm, I'm having my tea, right? Flat against the door, right? You're going to push. Now we're just going to start going back and forth like this, pushing harder and harder and harder, getting all of that paint off of the knife and onto Need the, the canvas like that, just like that. Uh -huh. Very so simple. Laura Lane is John Krasniak's wife. She just never changed her name. And I was like, oh, yes, it's the same for me. Yeah, right. I never changed my name either. I know. It's very hurtful. You know, you know what's hurtful? <laughs> it's like I changed my name and that became, that become, that become, you don't that want to be becomes me. the end of the journey. What? For my name. Right? No one else is having any more kids, are they? Are you planning on leaving me? So you want to save your... What? Yeah, like you just have that in your back pocket, like just in case. No, I could literally have any name if I left you. Like, I could divorce you and then change my name by Depole to Blue Unicorn. <laughs> it has nothing to do with whether or not I'm saving it for a rainy day. I'm saving just... yourself. No. That's horrible. I learned about soaking this last week. I don't even want to talk about it. I shouldn't even bring it up. I'm soaking? Sorry, Shh. We're not going to talk about it. Ah, okay. We're going to upset somebody. We're not talking about it, guys. A little bit of brown over here, too. <clears throat> Just to kind of mix in. And then we'll come back over that bit with our liquid white. i got to be honest, babe. That painting is amazing. You should just leave it the way it is. Okay, thanks, everybody. Goodbye.
No, now I want to see a kraken coming out of it. Like it's this guy's, this guy's little pet back here or something. What, like he's, like we're going to do a gravestone. Maybe we'll do a gravestone over here still. Like he's got his own Loch Ness monster. Yeah. That's awesome. It's like Lake Placid, but instead of a... Instead of a... It'd be uh, Lake Kraken. Yeah, Lake <laughs> Kraken. <laughs> instead of a giant alligator, it's a Kraken. Or it could be Lake Tentacle. Lake Placid was such a good movie. Oh, I like it. I like it, guys. It's coming out good. And again, just these differences in color, right? Little bits of different green, different stuff makes it look what? Oh, different, right? Oh, oh, Gambu buddies, Gambu, Gambu share everything together. Who else has seen Squid Game? Has anyone watched Squid Game? If you haven't watched it, I suggest that you watch it. If you're, you know, sick like me, it's a great show. Fantastic show. If you, you know, are kind of more conservative, it's probably not a good show for you to watch. But it's on Netflix, it's called Squid Game, and it will blow your freaking mind, okay? All right, let's see. Let's put, we could, no, that'll cover up too much. And we could put a small bit, nah. Still, it looks good with the grass, I think. I think it looks good with the grass. Now, all I'm doing is putting in a little bit of dark, again, just to, because that's what I like. I like it to be dark underneath our water. So, depends on how many times it takes me to do the water. Depends on how many times we do the dark bit, right? I like that. Okay, a lot of this stuff behind is going to get covered up anyway, but here we go. You guys ready? Let's do it. Why don't we get the fan brush first, just so we can have a nice like pointy little tip to our our guy that we won't have to mess around with too much. And it's just gonna be one arm and it's gonna come out and it's gonna be, no, I can't do that. So it's gotta come down like that, okay. All right, here we go, <laughs> here we go. This is just very lightly touching, right? And I'm gonna push harder as I want the arm to grow and thicker and thicker until it comes up out of the water, right? Is that, that may not even be the right shape, but when now it's stuck there, right? Now we have to, we have to make it work because it's up here on the canvas, right? Thicker, thicker, thicker. That's better, I guess. We can, we can give him some curl. It needs a curl, right? That's what, that's what we're missing. That's what we're missing is a bit of curl to his tentacle, which we can do with a with a liner brush and stuff. Don't worry about that. That'll be at the end. We can do it now even, because now it's bothering me. Right? We may even have to do more than one leg. We may end up doing more than one leg. Again, this guy he's got to have the right proportion, and then a very pointy little tip to him, right? And you can see my, maybe some of you, the first time watching, you've never tried having a yardstick, right? This helps kind of float over the painting so we can do, you know, crazy stuff and real, you know, tiny, minute little details. As long as you can touch your, your easel or the top of your canvas and have some space back in here, you can sit and do these little cool things. <laughs> John Krasniak says, oh, brave Josh. Yeah. This is your bravery test. We're gonna have to come out wider over there. There's something, that, it's like the angle. The angle of it is just annoying me now. Now we have to make it work. Maybe we'll put another one in there too, who knows. Okay, now coming up out of the water, right? We're gonna have all these little waves and, and splash come up out of there. We'll have some water dripping off of them. We'll do all sorts of crazy stuff. Let's clean off this fan brush first. Beat the devil out of it. All right. Got that, got that, got that. Show you guys how to take a chance, right? Take a chance. Take a chance, chance, take a chance, chance. Again, we're going to cover up a lot of this stuff at the bottom, okay? It's just going to be like some shadowy color in the water. Just in case anyone's confused, I did just slightly sing a little bit of an Abba song. Oh, an Abba song? Yeah. 
You said take a chance. You said take a chance on me. If you oh. change your mind, take a chance on her. All right, a little bit of yellow around the guy. <laughs> I hate that. Don't make me sing Abba, babe. So a little bit of white to brighten him up. A little bit of white to brighten him up. It's a good Halloween show to watch. It is. Yeah, almost like there's a little bit of yellow light kind of bubbling up underneath our guy, right? Hey, babe. Yeah. You should show people your PWJ. Uh, I don't know where it is. Great. Oh, you don't have to get. I'll, I'll show them all. Yeah. And then give me a Sorry. thing. I got a, got a specific idea I'm trying to achieve. A specific thing the campus told you? Because yes. the only thing it told me was to ask you to show the PWJ. <laughs> Right, just with the back side of the knife, and then as we come around, we use more of the front. Did we all set how some... long it takes for your paintings to dry? Yeah, about five to five to eight days. I I responded. Cool. I answered le question. There we go. A little bit of just thick white kind of waterline as he's coming up out of there, right? Why not? Why not? He's already there. We might as well. Or maybe we could take some white. A little bit of our liquid white into our titanium white. All right, we can make little like splashies like that. He's coming up and he's got the little ripples around him. It's kind of cool. Okay, now we all, we have to decide how much of him is going to be, you know, the suction side, right? So we'll have to go on the inside about half, maybe miss that bit and then come around here with more little tentacles. So let's decide on a color that we're gonna make those. And we could do white and blue. They look kinda cool. So uh, liquid white, sorry. I'm, I'm literally trying to make this up as we go. So <laughs> stick with me, right? Stay with us, stay with us. A Little bit of our liquid white and phthalo blue. And we're gonna try to come up underneath his little bit. Dragging it down. Kind of deciding where our our little blue tentacle bits are going to be showing, right? And out here we're going to fill that in with black anyway. So maybe we miss a little there. All right, trying to think about you don't want you, you're not going to see every single tentacle, right? If it's if it's facing the side, you're not going to see every single thing. So think about that when you're. Doing it. Maybe we can't see over here. It kind of fades off and goes behind. But then on this side, we might be able to see a few more. So down here, maybe it comes around like this. And now we can see a few more suckers. Right? If we fill all this in with that blue color in the front, and then we can add something else, you know, kind of sticking out. That way you can see it's kind of rotating as it's going up. Is that what it looks like to you, babe? Yes. Well, sweet. Sorry, I was distracted. Okay, now let's take the same little micro fan brush with our yellow and white. Let's make little yellow suckers out of this guy, right? Just kind of mixing it up onto our little brush, and then we need our yardstick again. Come up here, and now we're just gonna touch and deposit those little bits of yellow where we think he might have some suckers, right? And it's okay to go in front of, you know, the blue line, just a little bit, like a half a circle in front of that line, just gives it more depth. Let's see here, coming back. Had to get some more. And we're just dabbing it onto the, the, you know, little blue bits of the squid and wherever it sticks is where it's gonna stick. Some more liquid white, a little bit more yellow. All up into our brush. And maybe he's got some over here. Bam, 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 bam. All right, some of them are sticking out of the blue line. That gives it more of this feel. Like some of them are maybe longer than others or they're at a different angle. And we're just making them until we have that point where it kind of turns around and we can't really see. And then we'll pick them up down here. Is there anyone still watching? Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Lots of people. No yeah. people. Lots of people. There we go. Literally just kind of dabbing it in. These ones down here are going to be bigger, so we'll have to shape those as they get bigger, right? Give them some highlights and stuff like that. And this one comes out. It's got this big old sucker right there. <laughs> like that, right? The more they get down, the bigger they would be in my mind. Yeah. We have these monster sized suckers. There we go. All right, now look for the inside of those. Let's change up the color a little bit. <laughs> we'll go with red. Roberta Harris said, still good. That's <laughs> We'll go with red on the inside, right? Like there's a, maybe that's the sucker bit or the bit with the, all the teeth is on the inside of some of those yellow areas, right? And all we're doing is just getting a little bit of red with the liquid white so it sticks. You gotta have it stick. Oh, that one's got a little bit of white in it. That looks cool. Yeah, just change up the color of the suckers even. Why not? We can always go back in with our yellow and fill it in. Making little circles with little dots in the middle of them, basically. All it really is, you can even put a little white dot inside the red dots, just to give it more of whatever you think it needs. Right? We almost need, it almost needs more. What do you think, babe? Yeah. Like down the side right here? Where we stopped them. I think it needs we need to have some kind of something. So let's get the liquid white and the blue again. All right, mix it up, and then we'll just continue on. Maybe from up here, and then that whole section of him will be able to see more little bits, right? More cool little things. Mm -hmm. That looks better. All right, a little bit of white, a little bit of uh, our yellow. Come back. There we go. Maybe they start getting bigger over here already. Like that, just making little circles, going halfway out of the, the line that we made initially, right? Halfway out, that way they look like they're sticking out away from the, the thing. Sticking out away from the arm. much bigger down here. I like it. Much bigger circles. There we go. That looks cool. What do you think, hon? Amazing. Amazing. I don't know if it's amazing. But it looks John pretty Krasniak cool. John Krasniak is so in awe of what you're painting. He's not even typing anything. Ha! <laughs> hey, get back to work, John. <laughs> don't be me. <laughs> What do you guys think? A little bit of color of the red, a little bit of a uh, little bit of red, a little bit of the liquid white, just to get it to stick on the inside, right? Making our little dots. A little bit more liquid white, a little bit more red. Always go back and get more liquid white. It helps the paint stick to the already thin paint that we have up here, right? You don't have to do every one with a red dot in it. It just looks kind of neat. Looks kind of neat like that. Now to cover it, right? First, we have to come back and fill in our dark shadowy side with a little bit more black. Sorry, I'm trying to stay out of your guys' way and see at the same time. There's just too light over there. See what I mean now? Got it. Now it looks good. <clears throat> looks good that there we go there we go i like it you see me look back at the tv that looks really cool actually all right let's come back to something more realistic now now then to come down i like the way that the uh the tombstone came out in that other painting last week from using our filbert brush here so let's do that again get a little bit of our white a little bit of our dark color onto the filbert brush in one direction, right? Pulling it down like that. So then we can come up and let's 
if we make it, if you want it to be close, you're going to have to cover over some of your cabinet. If you want it to be smaller and further away, then you know you don't have to cover over your some of your cabinet. Here we go. We're going to take it like this. It goes straight down, and then straight down like that, like a little curve to it, right? Now we got our own little tombstone. Then you can shape it so it's a nice shape that you like. Remember, go down further than you think you need because then you can pull it out a little bit and we have this nice soft little gravestone out in front. Maybe the Kraken ate the husband, just like in Lake Placid, right? <laughs> <clears throat> what else can we do, guys? What else can we do? Um, you could have some bats or birds, just saying. Yeah, those come at the end. <laughs> Try to throw me off. All right, let's take a step back, be with you guys back here. What does the Facebook camera look like even? Looks cool. There's still a little bit of glare though. How come no one told me about the glare? All right, now let's do. I want to have some kind of something at the bottom here. You can't just leave it like that. Let's get a little bit of uh, green, a little bit of yellow. Why don't we come in again with our grassy color, right? We're just kind of covering over. We have this little pond where he lives. And that way, this gives us a little bit of land that now we can stick something big in front of, you know, and, put, and give more depth to the painting, right? A little bit of land, and you can see we're coming up higher and higher and higher over here, like there's a, maybe there's a hill that comes down this way. Or, you know, someone may imagine that it connects around the side like that. Little taps, all you really need. Little tappy tap tappies. You can always take if you wanted to and add, you know, some text to your your little uh, gravestones. Since it's Halloween, I like, you know, R.I.P. It's classic. Can't do much better. Well, you know what we did too? If we put a little bit of a dark line, since everything else, that looks very 2D to me, right? It's very flat. So, if we put a dark line here, around the edge, bam, and we just separate it just a little bit and have that other gray color back there as well, then it'll look 3D. Very cool. Just having that one little dark line in there kind of gives it that same effect that our, our cabin has. I'm giving you a front side and a back side to it. Looks really cool. It's very cool, babe. It's very cool. Very cool. There we go. Damn, I like it. Looks neat. All right, let's put one big tree in here somewhere. Kind of hide our crack in a little bit. If we put him here, Ooh. right, we could throw a couple branches off. We don't have to kill the moon. If we put him over here, we could bend a tree in around the moon and around the kraken. And pull it in like this. I put it at the end of that fence. Well, we gotta cover over that bit. No, the bit on the left hand side where that gap is on the fence. Yeah, that's what we yep. cover over. Mm -hmm. But have the tree grow from down here. Yeah. It's gotta be down here. So we'll just, we could do anything and then we'll throw a big branch in front of the Kraken or something like that. That sounds good. It's a democracy around here. All right, so just right on the brush. Doesn't very much matter anymore how much paint you have left, black, blue, crimson. You can go like this back and forth, kind of dragging them all together, right? Nice and crisp. Don't need it very thick, but you need a nice knife-like edge, okay? Now let's come up and we'll put a, it's gotta be taller than your crack and arm, taller than our forest in order to bring it closer to us, okay? So why don't we come up like this? <laughs> very thin, very thin, a little Laura, jagged, maybe it turns a little bit. Laura Krasniak says, where is the great pumpkin, Josh Brown? Josh Brown? I don't know. Hey, James Brown? Wow! I feel good. We can do a pumpkin. We can put a pumpkin in there. Right by, yeah, right by the front door of the... Right? Of the cabin. And there we go, guys. Fill in our little crazy-looking tree. Right? There's lots of bravery tests when you paint with Josh. And I like having the tree not a perfect 
shape, right? Have some squigglies in there. It makes it look more real. And when you're doing a Halloween painting, more scary, right? Now you don't have to go all the way off the bottom. I don't like doing that a lot. So we'll kind of pull out just the last little bit of him, go back in, get our little yellowy greeny grass and just kind of fill it in around. That way we're not off the bottom of the canvas. It's not so close, right? Oh, um, Roberta Harris says, as in Charlie Brown. Ah. Makes a bit more sense now. I feel a bit stupid. <laughs> Good morning, Sunday. Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah, right. uh, Ricochet Review says, Josh, can this painting be purchased? Yeah, this will be available to be purchased in my Etsy store as soon as we're done, basically. It takes a couple hours for Etsy to kind of uh, yeah, get the the listing in and then, you know, process it and all that stuff. But, yeah, it'll be available in my Etsy store as soon as we get done. And John should be putting out the Etsy links. There he goes. Yeah, see? <laughs> so you can go to my link that John just put into the comments. Depending on where you're watching, I think he's only on YouTube, right? Yeah. So if you're not watching on YouTube, then go to... Uh, Etsy.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. Or you can go to www.paintwithjosh.com for all links. That's true. All of my stuff is on the website. So you can do that. So if you, you know, if that's the avenue that you want to go, then go to the website and you can get them there. Ooh, just right over the moon. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. Pushes that moon back. Bamboo. No, I like that. I love that old man. <laughs> love that old man. We are Gambu buddies. Oh my god. Gambu shit, everything. Alright, why don't we come across? Oh, there he goes. Let's cross the crack and arm. Right? And remember, if you need if you make one really long, then it needs to be very thick down here where it holds on to the the tree, right? that very thick very strong branch otherwise this thing would have fallen off you know ages ago wind would have taken it and you want to have that liquid clear or paint thinner low odor mineral spirits that's what we dipped in over here and then kind of mix it in it's going to be very runny and that way it won't get stuck running over all this other stuff like this fence like ah just cuts right through the fence you know what i mean you don't have to it doesn't the paint doesn't break it doesn't do anything it's fantastic Maybe another little branch off that side. And now again, he's got to be big enough to support all that weight of this branch. Got to be supported by this tree right here. So make it connect, make it look realistic. You know what I mean? You can't have a big thick end of a branch at the end of a branch. It would have, it would have just fallen off. It doesn't look real. Make sure you get that liquid you know, low odor mineral spirits, whatever it is, really thick on your brush. You want it to be thick. And that way, it'll glide over everything nice and easy, right? This guy's missing one over here. He's like, hey, I need some love. I'm feeling left out. Nobody likes me over here. See, look at that. It's just like so much more scary. Oh. All right. I don't want to do too much over the Kraken. Just a couple little things. Man, look, we went through all that thick paint and then into the trees and then the clouds. So again, you want to have a lot of paint thinner on your brush so you can do all these cool things, right? That looks amazing. I love this one. I love it. Now, maybe there's one more big old branch wraps around the side. You won't even really be able to see it, but you'll know it's there. I know it's there. Okay, let's see. Again, I don't want to highlight the tree very bright because it is nighttime again. So when we make our brown color, make sure it's a little bit darker. And then why don't we do something different this time? We've been doing these kind of rounded style deals. Let's do something different. So all of our highlight is going to be on the right side. We're going to start at the top and just drag it down. Just like we did with that fence, kind of dragging it, making a straight line as it comes down, right? Well, a wiggly, wiggly straight line. And then we're going to do it again, a little bit different. And that way we're going to have these long angular, you know, these long bark marks. What's a bark mark? Well, it's a mark 
in the park. Like, well, it's almost like it's got all that vertical bark and it'll cast little shadows across everything. It'd be kind of cool looking. If we can get it right. And you want to have spaces of dark in between your bits of light, obviously, otherwise it's not going to look right. Got to have a line of dark in between that line of lighter brown. All sorts of fun. How's that look, babe? Amazing. Old thing. There we go. Bam, bam, bam. Just like that. You don't need a whole lot. You really don't. Adds a little bit of texture to our thickest, our most thickest branches. Gets that little bit of difference in color, right? Really all you need. Gives our branch a little bit of some something. Okay, you can even tap it in like this. Like literally, all you are doing is making these little minute little changes. So when the buyer looks at it, there'll be all these little differences in color. Man. Beautiful. Anything else I do is going to ruin it. Okay. So yeah, go to the Etsy shop. Go to, uh, you know, all the places. Get your supplies from my Amazon store. You'll get a discount. Don't ask me why. Maybe it's because I'm an influencer or whatever. But for some reason, people are getting a discount when they shop through my store. Let's put like a big bush down here too. Something else. Something else because we got all this paint, right? Got all the paint. Got to use it. So I want to come up over some of the water, right? Got to cover over some of our water, some of our favorite bits, and just adds depth. Okay? Nice, thick, crazy bit of bush. Again, you can pull it out at different angles. Pull it over this way, just so it's not sitting off the very bottom of the canvas. And then we can again come in with our yellow and greens. Create our grass in front. And then we can highlight this sucker. Yeah, looks really neat. Wash off our half inch round brush or half round, whatever. Now we'll come in and decide. Everything else is green. Let's just keep it green, man. Keep it green. So, a little bit of uh, Bob Ross liquid white, right? Deposit a lot of it because you always end up getting too much than you need. And then just slowly start bringing in and kind of mixing it like that until you have this desired color that you're looking for. It's nice and wet and sticky. All right. Then we'll come in and just very lightly tap on the bushes. We're not trying to make, you know, the same shape that we did before. We're just touching it like very lightly. Just, you know, just very lightly. We're not pushing it to make the bristles spread out. Just tapping it and whatever sticks sticks and that's it. Don't force it. Don't try to mess with it. Don't try to do too much, right? That's what we always say. Now you can come in, because we're on a white canvas, if we scrape away some of these things, it will leave white sticks in our painting, right? Don't be too worried about the sticks, right? You can make giant ones, you can make little ones, but don't worry about it too much. Do it quickly, and that way you don't think about it. You just do it, and then it's done. Don't even have to worry. Ricochet Reviews says, I'm Jeff, by the way, and I'll be here every time you paint, Josh. Thanks so much for your help. Jeff! Thank you for uh, watching and staying. I love when people are like, Josh is my favorite painter. I'm like, oh my god, you guys are so great. You're so great. Okay, look, I would imagine there would be some form of like, maybe little bits of water that are trickling down our the back of our Kraken, right? As he sprung up out of the water, it would be some form of drizzle or something. Wouldn't you think, babe? Yeah. I mean, if we're going to paint a realistic looking kraken, you would imagine there would be some little bits of water that are maybe like dripping off of him as they come down, right? These little bits, little stuff differences, a little sheen. Maybe it's a maybe it's a wet, like leathery or rubbery skin on him. Just add some kind of difference, some kind of texture. Look at that bit of water that's coming off. It's like boop, little little dot, little a little droplet kind of falling off. Whew, gonna fall down and attach again. 
I like it. But the thing is, again, I'm even telling myself, like, don't do too much, right? If you do too much, you lose the cool effect. So don't do too much. And that is my advice for the day, right? Do less. Do less. You guys know me too. I love doing that. We're not going to get another brush dirty. We're going to do it with this bigger brush. Get a little bit of liquid white and create our little moss. It's growing up the side of our tree, right? Very light green, almost like a whitish green. Turn the brush sideways. And just tap, just very lightly tap. But whatever sticks, sticks. A little bit of moss growing up gives our little shadowy area a little bit more depth, right? It's very cool. Very cool little easy technique to give your tree a little bit of round look. So, well, I hope everyone's had a good time. Everyone had a good time? I'm gonna get into the raffle soon, I would imagine. Yeah, that's it. All right, getting a little bit of thing here. I like putting my little own personal touch on mine, and that's adding my family of birds. Maybe bats. I don't know how to paint bats. Okay. I'm not gonna do that again. We, uh, we never get to travel a lot, so this is how we travel around the world, seeing all the beautiful places that Josh paints, right? I have three people, my wife, me, me myself, my daughter, and uh, me, myself, me, my wife, my daughter, yeah. or my wife, myself, my daughter. I feel like this schizophrenia show. I know, crazy, freaking crazy, man. Me, myself, and me, I. Me, and me, and me. <laughs> we all get to travel around and check out these cool, creepy places. Tres mois. And uh, so it just, I, the people seem to like it. It's like a little bit of personal touch. Just trying to make my fence a little bit more brownish. There we go. Don't want it to be perfect, of course. Don't want it to be perfect. All right. All right, we got our birds. Let's get our signature. Let's do the drawing. The drawing, right? Where are we going to put our signature this time? Over here in the tree. In the window of your cabin. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, Kay Campbell said, absolutely awesome, Josh. Yet yeah, another masterpiece. Love Aww. watching. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. So if you want to enter the raffle, get your raffle entries in right now. No, you got literally like a minute if you want to be in. It's a dollar through Cash App, PayPal, or Venmo. Uh, as many times as you want. As many dollars as you want. I sit here, write your initials down on a tiny piece of paper, drop it in a box, and then we pull them live on. Yeah. You guys literally have about until I get done cleaning these brushes. And then we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. All right, we're, we're auctioning off one of these. And that way, you can have your choice. If you win, you can pick your fave. Oh, that's what we're doing? Yeah. That's nice. What do you think we were doing? I don't know what we were doing. I don't know. We can't now just change it and be like, it's no, only I for just, this one. I just didn't right. know that you could pick your favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Choose your favorite of the three. If you want to give it away to somebody. Right. Or if it fits your, you know, decor, you want to keep it for yourself. All right, I only got two more brushes to clean and then we're gonna be ready. There we go. Anybody else? Anybody else? Do you wanna enter the raffle? Raffle hit over here, anybody hit? Ice cold beer hit. Ice cold beer? Yeah, that's what they say at the ballpark. Oh. Raffle over here, anybody? Ice cold beer. <clears throat> beer here. Well, I mean, I bet it makes sense. All right. There we go. Getting stuff everywhere. Get that, got these little guys. Watch this out one more time. Yeah, so this painting will be available at the Apothecarium for cash prices, man. Unless somebody buys it out of my Etsy store for full price. So we'll see what happens, right? And it usually takes an hour or two for Etsy to process it and do all that before it'll even be really ready for sale. It's not as sharp as I wanted it to be. Sweet. I'll dig it. I'll dig it. 
Man, that's good. All right, who's ready for the raffle? I'm ready for the raffle. Anybody ready? We're all ready. Well, heck, he's got one giant Kraken arm. Like, where's the rest of the octopus? How deep is this pool? I don't know. That, but allow something that giant to live in there, right? I think when it... It's gotta be deep. My fear is when it falls down, it takes up the camp. It's like... <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Like those fail videos. It's like, videos feed me! Ba -ba. Like those fail <laughs> videos on TikTok. Oh, yeah. Or like a big tree, right? Kills my house. And cutting down the tree and then it kills the house. That's funny. But yeah, I like it. So, all right, who's who's ready? Let's We're raffle ready. it. Let's raffle it. Let's take this guy down real quick and uh, finish the top side. See you guys? Hey, this is why we <laughs> finish the edges. So, let's finish it while we're here. We can hang it up. Give anybody that last little opportunity to. To get your raffles in while we finish the top. There we go. Bam, 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 bam. It's all finished. Bring this sucker up. If you're interested in entering the raffle, which will be drawn in approximately 30 seconds. Yeah, right? This is your last chance. We are literally drawing now. Okay. You have said no nobody more. has written stop. Yeah, oh. no one said wait. Let me get in. No, right. none of no, that. That's okay. it. You don't have to wait. All right, guys. Here we go. With my sweaty glove. Ooh. Gross. My wet hand. All I should. All I need to do is really just stick a finger in there. Whatever sticks Ew. onto my. Onto my gross hand. All right, people. Okay, let's see. Here we. I'm like standing like this. Please, can, can I have some more? Yeah, give me one second. Hold on. Can I have some more? I'm gonna pinch lemon's butt right now, guys. Please don't pinch. Shh, I'm gonna pinch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go, people. Okay, here's my box. This is one of my cigar boxes, actually, that we paint. Uh, this is the Ciguaro Desert, right? Because the cactuses are cigars. <laughs> and then there's one on the top as well. So you get, what, five different paintings? And these boxes go for like $40 in my shop. Yeah. Okay, I have not looked inside. I mean, can you guys see? Okay, there's yep. all the initials. I am not looking. Let's put it on top of my head. And we can prove that we're not <laughs> looking. How's this look on camera? I, oh, hold on. Let me out. Oh, yeah, YouTube's YouTube. got to come out. There we go. Oh, you got itchy eyes. Yeah, this is how we make, you know, sure that it's a fair game, okay? Yeah, I don't want All right. anyone to now, I have it's unfair. a handful, as you can see. I cannot see. I'm go is it over the box? Okay, I'm going to start yeah. dropping them until I have one left. And that one is... Oh. <laughs> L.K. Laura Krasniak. <laughs> nice. So, Laura Krasniak, which is your favorite <laughs> painting that you get to choose? <laughs> And then we'll send this to you in the package. Roberta, I sent yours. Oh, uh, Lemon sent yeah, yours, actually. Yeah, I was like, excuse me. Lemon sent yours the other day. Uh, so, yeah, I'll send you your own little LK deal. I'm so sorry, but John. What, what, uh, <laughs> what, what's happening? John was like, I'll never hear the end of it if she wins. Oh, well, she won. <laughs> okay, so you have your choice between the orange one, the blue oh, one hold here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Or this Tim Burton style they one down here. They are on YouTube. So oh, they're that's... on YouTube. Let's Go spin like it this. One okay. of these. So it's one of those three. Should have been just one of these two, because I'm pretty sure that that one would sell over at APOT, but it's fine. Well, we can pay So one of, one. Uh, which one? Which one would you like? Come on, Laura. Which John, one would you like? Your wife. Because they are all gorgeous. I love the cabin in this bottom one. It's fantastic. How the trees are like all curved and bent in. Really neat. So, what is the uh, what's the verdict? I don't know. Uh, John, hello. Anybody? Okay. Well, you guys can just write to us afterwards and and uh, and choose your favorite that way, and we'll start to say goodbye to everybody. Okay. Oh, so. I was gonna say if you don't decide, we move on to winner number two. Oh, please. No, that would not be fair. No, I know. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for watching the raffle, watching the painting, seeing what we came up with. I don't even know if you can see it anymore. Oh, way she down says here. blue sky. Blues. So this this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, right on.
That's a good one. It was the first autumn one that we did. And there's a video for it that you can watch over and over and over again, right? Yay! So, uh, besides that, good choice, uh, Laura Krasniak, the winner. Uh, good choice on your painting right here, this beautiful 16 by 20 inch painting. Real creepy cabin. That's actually the one that London painted, too. She painted oh, yeah, it is. this section of the cabin right here. <laughs> so thanks to everybody for watching the show today. We'll do another raffle in like two weeks. Well, actually, in two weeks will be Halloween, Halloween day. And we'll be painting, we'll be doing a live broadcast from a remote location. So everything will be crazy, and I probably won't even be able to hear. It's not going to be a good day to uh, paint along, I don't think. Uh, but it'll be a good day to just watch. I'll have my Bob Ross wig on. We're going to be inside a dispensary here in town. Um, it's going to be fantastic. So, yeah, besides that, I hope you guys try this. I hope you uh, share all the videos when you try. You know, copy the link. There's literally, they, literally a little arrow with the word share underneath it on YouTube. Hit that button, it will copy the link for you. Then you can go post it, copy, paste, bam, share the link for me. I can't reach everybody, so I'm counting on you guys to help me reach the worldly audience and bring them in here to my tiny little room where we paint, right? So, until the next time, uh, congrats to the winner. Uh, check out my Etsy store, etsy.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. Uh, you can get your Amazon supplies from Amazon.com slash shop slash Happy Landscape Art. Which is a paid advertising sponsorship. Yeah, that's my affiliate link. Uh, and then you can go to Happy, uh, sorry, <laughs> paintwithjosh.com, not Happy Glow Landscapes anymore. Paintwithjosh.com as the rebranding has occurred, right? So besides that, I again, want to thank you guys. And I love seeing your, your paintings when you do the paintings. Me and London love, you know, seeing what everybody's is going to look like. So... You know, besides that, do you have anything else, babe? Uh, no. I have nothing. She's already rubbing it in. Yeah, oh, right. Nice. <laughs> the winner, what she bet and he bet. Yeah. And she won. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, you'll never hear the end of that one, John. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. We love you yeah. guys. Thank love you so you. much for tuning in and talking with me every Sunday. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Right. Goodbye. See you guys next week. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, hold on. YouTube. Ah! <laughs>